Welcome back to the channel. Happy 2023. Today we're talking about how to become a freelance React developer, which is something that I've done in the past year. And so I wanted to reflect on what my best tips and strategies are and share them with you in case that you're interested in doing the same thing. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so today we're going to talk about how to get skills, how to get clients, and then some general pro tips I have for you about how to approach this thing professionally. Okay, so starting with getting the skills, getting software engineering skills in general has been a huge theme of this channel, and I won't go over trodden ground, but I will link you a playlist up here that has my best videos about how to become a software engineer. But just to recap here for your sake, I'd say in order to become a freelance React developer, you need to first get the foundational web technology skills. So that would be learning HTML for a web page's structure, CSS for a web page's style, and JavaScript for a web page's interactivity. From there, you can branch out into learning a JavaScript framework. And since we're talking about how to become a React developer specifically, I would learn React after you've learned those foundational technologies and built a few projects with them. Basically, I think you're ready to learn React after you know how to fetch data from an API with JavaScript and render it to a page in HTML. There's a lot of different resources for actually learning these technologies. The one that I recommend to people the most is freecodecamp.org. It's a completely free online resource that has great exercises and curriculum around learning these technologies, but you could also do something like a coding bootcamp. After you've learned and built some projects in React, it's time to get some work experience. Work experience is helpful if you wanna be a freelancer because typically companies want to hire experienced people. So if you're trying to freelance right out of the gate from a coding bootcamp or teaching yourself, it is possible, but you may have to charge lower rates and you'll probably really have to scrap in order to get projects. That said, it can be done, but I would recommend maybe a little bit of work experience or an internship first. And there's a bunch of ways of going about getting one of those. Like I said, there's a lot of ways of doing it, but basically you just want some professional experience that you can point to so your prospective clients can know you are a legit person. Okay, let's assume you've built some projects and you've gotten some professional experience in React. Now you're ready to go get some clients. So let's talk about getting clients. There are basically two buckets in terms of marketing in general, but you're marketing yourself now because you're a business. So the buckets are inbound and outbound. Inbound is basically opportunities that are coming to you because people know who you are. So this could be having a following on social media. This could be leveraging your local network. This could be going to meetups and conferences and maybe speaking at those meetups and conferences. Basically people, whether it's professional contacts or family or whoever know, hey, this is Peter. He's a freelance developer. If I hear of opportunities and if I like him and think he's good at what he does, then I'm gonna send him opportunities. So basically inbound in my view is kind of work you've done ahead of time that is getting you leads now. And in fact, I've worked with two clients this year and the second of those came from my local network. So that's an example of getting opportunities from inbound leads. Outbound is basically the opposite of everything I just said. So that is activity that you're undertaking now to go out and get leads. So this could look like applying to actual jobs, going on job sites, sending cold emails. Basically, you're putting yourself out there in order to get opportunities. And my first opportunity was kind of a mix of this. So I put myself out there on a job site called dice.com, but then I got connected with a recruiter and that recruiter began to give me opportunities and leads. So if I had to categorize this one, I'd probably say it's inbound, but it was initially established through some outbound activity of mine. So if we're talking about you, this activity might look like applying for jobs on up work or on a site like a.team or going on LinkedIn, cold messaging people, cold emailing people that look like they might have a need for a freelance developer. So that's a high level overview of how to get the skills and how to get clients. Obviously there's a lot more that could be said, but I think that's pretty good as a roadmap and general idea of what you need to do in order to get your first gig. With that said, let's go ahead and talk about some pro tips that I've picked up over this past year of being a solo freelance developer. And the first of those is figure out a way to make time tracking and invoicing painless. Nobody got into software engineering to do back office admin stuff, but the fact is it's a reality of owning your own business. And so I think the least amount of time you can spend 
spend on that stuff, the better, but you still want to get it done. And if it's painful, you're not going to want to do it. Same goes for bookkeeping. So basically what I do is I've come up with a very streamlined system with Google Sheets and with Canva invoices. And I basically just track my time as I go. And then at the end of the month, I submit my invoice. So it's pretty straightforward. But if your situation is a little more complicated, you might need to put in a little bit more thought as to how to create a better system. The point here is when you're a freelancer, you're responsible for making sure you get paid as opposed to a W2 nine to five job where you just probably get direct deposit every couple weeks. So this is something you need to pay attention to. Another tip I have here is to keep your skills sharp and keep learning. And this is basically working on your business versus working in your business. So this is an idea from the E-Myth Revisited, but because you are the business, you wanna be working on yourself, on your skills, which are the main thing that you're selling, making sure that they're sharp, that you're up to date on technology, and that you're continuing to learn and grow so that you can add more value to your clients. I think it'd be really easy to get stuck in a rut or be focusing on getting new leads or marketing or invoicing and other stuff and get distracted from the actual task at hand, which is to be a great developer. So make sure that you don't forget about that. My last general tip is to be professional. And this could look a lot of different ways, but I'm thinking professional communication. So when you're emailing clients or in Slack with clients, you want to write in full sentences, not use a lot of slang and be professional and respectful. You also want to be available during working hours or when you say that you're going to be available and respond to messages and emails quickly. A last idea here is that you want to think about offboarding. So you're probably not gonna work with all your clients forever. So you need to think about a good way to transition off projects and how to make it as seamless as possible for your client and as painless as possible for you. That could look like having a good process for transferring repos and code and making sure that the client owns their logins. I'm thinking particularly of a project I had at a last job where the client had asked us to set up some heat map software and I'd made the logins under our company and then it was a little bit of a mess to transfer everything over to the client. So some best practices are to have the client own the logins from the beginning and just add you. And so that way, if you ever have to roll off the project, it's nice and seamless and you don't have to worry about transferring a bunch of stuff over. So we talked about the three areas, how to get your skills, how to get clients and some pro tips. Talking about heat map software actually reminds me of the sponsor of today's video, which is Posthog. Posthog is the open source product OS and Posthog has everything under one umbrella that you could want for your product, whether it's product analytics with funnels, a testing framework, an AB framework, feature flags, heat map software, like I mentioned, anything you could want, Posthog has it. If you're watching this and you work on a SaaS or you own a SaaS, I bet all of your product analytics and data are split across all different kinds of apps and software. And Posthog helps you to get all of your product ops and data in one place. If Posthog sounds intriguing, then go ahead and use my link below posthog.com slash Peter Elbaum so that they know I sent you. And thanks so much to Posthog for sponsoring this video. Thanks so much for watching to the end. As a reminder, I make videos about software engineering and self-employment. So if that sounds interesting, then consider sticking around. But regardless, thanks so much for being here. Remember, stay hungry, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.